Today we're going to create crystal formations for our battlefields. You're going to need some cardboard for your base, a little bit of pink foam insulation, something to cut with, a little glue, and some very fine gravel, and some paint. Now to start out with your base you can use, um, I'm going to use cardboard. I of course will need to glue some sand later around the corrugated edges just so it doesn't look bad or some flocking. And I've chosen to do it in a hexagonal pattern because I'm going to use this both for Song of Blades and Heroes and for Heroescape. And Heroescape uses hexes, so this is roughly the shape that I'm going to need. So I've got that ready, and now I need to actually create my crystal pieces. So I've already cut a section of pink foam insulation about the size I wanted. I'll need to smooth it out, of course. And then I'm going to cut it into sections. And I'm using my hot foam cutter, but you can also use a box knife or something like that. So I'm going to cut these all in slightly different lengths. And now we just need to bring each end to a point. Try not to destroy the other ones as you do it, and save your little pieces because we're going to use a couple of them. So there's my first cut. Now I'm going to rotate it and do roughly the same thing. And now, I'm going to just try to even it up a little bit, and you can do that with, with the box knife. I'm just going to sand it a little. Since it's a natural formation, I don't expect perfection. Although, I don't know much about crystals. Maybe, maybe they are perfect, but mine will not be. Alright, so, there's one. I'm going to make three of these. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I don't want them all sticking up at the same angle, so I'm going to leave one flush at the bottom, but the other two I'm going to angle off a little. So that when I attach it to the base, it'll kind of stick over. Okay, well I'm going to repeat this process with the other two. Alright, now while I was waiting for my hot glue to warm up, I put a bead of white glue around the edge of the cardboard and shook some sand on there. Once it dries, that should cover the corrugation pretty well. I can already see a little spot that I missed, but that's going to be easy to touch up. So now I've got my crystals cut, and I'm going to use some hot glue to affix them to the base. Now, you, you can use something like white glue, but working with the foam, I like the hot glue because it's going to stick right away. There's my central piece, and then my two smaller ones, I'm going to look at where I've angled them and have each angling away from the main piece. So put one here, and one over on the other side. I'm not going to space them perfectly. The other thing I did, I mentioned to save your little bits. I cut out a few pieces, very tiny of the foam. I didn't even try to make them look like perfect crystals. I just wanted something that's going to stick up and look like partially formed bits of crystal. Just to add a little variety to it. Now the bad thing about hot glue is it gets really stringy. And somebody who knows more about this stuff than me might even know a trick to keep it from happening, but I don't, so I just wind up picking it all off when I get to the stage that I need to do so. Alright, so I've got a few extra bits. And now, I'm going to totally coat the rest of it in white glue. Get it on nice and thick. 
all the way out to the edges and I am just going to totally cover this base in the fine gravel and what you want ideally is gravel that's not smooth and rounded you want it to be coarse and have sharp edges and things like this so it'll look natural with the crystals and I'm not really sure what you can get at a hobby store I've seen the mini decorative gravel at places like Michaels and Hobby Lobby but a lot of time it's that smooth rounded stuff but I'm really lucky because where I live here in New Mexico the ants completely cover their anthills in just the right kind of gravel so I went out and scooped up just a little and I apologize to them as I went so now let's get this right up to the edges And you can't, of course, always fill in after the first go round, but I want to catch as much of it the first time as I can. So I think we got pretty good coverage here. Now, I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. Try to get everything covered. So, shake off the excess. Look for it wasn't quite ready for that. So, we're going to give it another load. And then we will. Then I'm going to give it some time to dry before we do anything else. So, anyway, not going to hold it up this time since that didn't work out for me last time. We're going to let this dry and then it will be time for painting. Alright, so I have primered it with um, some flat black and now we're going to brush on a couple layers of red. The first will be kind of a dark red and I'm not going to go too heavy with it because, you know, going to dry brush and leave some shadows showing and then we will follow it up by highlighting with a brighter red that has just a little bit of a metallic finish on it. Now, with the main crystals, I'll go ahead and get them completely covered. And then the, um, the rocks we will dry brush. see with these just going to paint the tops to give the shadowed effect so that'll give you an idea of what we're going to do and we'll come back in a minute and see how it's looking all right we've brushed on a dark shade of red now we're going to do some highlighting and what I've done is I've taken a brighter shade of red and I've mixed it with just a little bit of metallic red and I am just going to lightly brush it across all the gravel on the base and then I'm just going to highlight crystals a little. Get the various corners and points. Really not going to do a whole lot to it. Just enough to make the high points contrast. with the darker sections. Alright, so 
So we're going to give it some time to dry and then we will see how it looks when it's finished. And here we have our finished product. As you can see I did both the red one and a blue one. And you know I kind of like the blue better. I really like the colors on that, the way it looks. But the red is cool too. I wound up adding some white to my red and doing a little bit more highlighting just to bring out some of the details. But overall I think it really adds to my dungeon terrain. Now as I mentioned this stuff is going to do double duty not only for Song of Blades and Heroes but for Heroes. Sorry for the interruption there. Um, I'm going to use this also for HeroScape. Now as you can see HeroScape has this interlocking stackable plastic tile. Sometimes when you make your own terrain you'll have a problem with it sliding around. A way to prevent this is to get some short pieces of say toothpick. In this case I've got bits of plastic skewer. Put them down inside the hexes at the right length and then what I'll do is I'm going to very carefully put some super glue gel on each of these and then Carefully put your piece of terrain back on top and you give it time to dry and when it's done you've got something that will sit down inside those hexes and hold your thing in place but it's not going to be so big as to make it a problem to use it on a regular battlefield. So there is our very simple